Hello, welcome back to Chemistry. It is All That Matters and today we're going to look at the formation of ions and we'll look at both the formation of positive ions and negative ions. Positive ions being cations, negative ions being anions. So let's remind ourselves first that when we look at the periodic table each of the elements in a given group and a group is a column so we have all of the columns of the periodic table and each of the elements in that group will have the same electron configuration as far as the end or the valence electron organization and therefore we're going to use one element from each of those groups as a representative of that group as we look at how ions are formed. So let's begin with sodium and we'll use sodium as the representative element for group 1 ions which is the first row or column of the periodic table. These would be the alkali metals. Now for sodium we have an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1 and that gives us 11 protons, 12 neutrons and then 11 electrons. Now the valence electron is the 3s1 which gives us one electron in that s orbital which means we basically have seven empty spaces we can also see that in the Lewis dot diagram here where we have a single electron all by itself with the Na symbol now would it be easier for sodium to try to gain seven new electrons in order to get the rule of octet and have eight electrons and be like a noble gas being stable or would it be easier for this atom to give up its 3s1 electron and go back to the 2s2 2p6 octet well that's what sodium will do so sodium will actually drop that extra electron in the 3s1 and it will go to 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now this changes the electron count to 10. So now we have 11 protons, 10 electrons, which means it has one extra positive charge, making it a positive 1 ion. And all of the elements in that group 1 column, lithium, sodium, potassium, will all take on this plus 1 charge normally as part of their becoming ions. So let's look at group 2 and we will use calcium as our example. Now for calcium we're going to use the noble gas or core notation of argon 4s2 which gives us two electrons in the s suborbital and that gives us two dots in the Lewis dot. So again we're looking at a situation where we have six empty electron spaces and because it has 20 protons, 20 neutrons, and 20 electrons will calcium be better suited by giving away two electrons or trying to take on six more? So we will give up those two electrons referring it back to its neon 3s2 3p6 format following the rule of octet of 2s and 6p and now we have an electron count of 18 which makes it a calcium plus 2 cation and magnesium and beryllium will follow this same rule as well being the members of that same group aluminum has a ne 3s2 3p1 electron configuration this is the group 3a ion group and we have two electrons in the s one in the first p suborbital 13 protons, 14 neutrons, and 13 electrons, but again, aluminum has three electrons, making it have five empty spaces. So do we give up three or take on five? And aluminum will give up the three, referring back to neon as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, taking the rule of octet and stability at 2p6, and this changes our electron count to 10 and therefore we have 13 protons, 10 electrons, 3 more protons than electrons, giving us an aluminum plus 3 charge. Now we will move to the other side of the periodic table and we'll look at the fluorine atom and this is in group 7a and we're talking about the ions in the halogen group and fluorine 1s2, 2s2, 2p5 
This gives us seven valence electrons, two in the S and five in the P. That means we have nine protons, ten neutrons, and nine electrons. And when we look at the Lewis dot diagram, we see that it has one empty space. So should fluorine try to get rid of seven or just pick up one? Well, it will pick up one. It will become like neon. It will become stable at the rule of octet, 2s2, 2p6. And because it now has an electron count of 10, but it only has nine protons, this means it has one extra negative charge, making it an F negative one. And this will be the same for all of the halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. So they will all take on that anion form of F negative one or a negative one charge. When we go to the oxygen family, and we will use sulfur as our representative atom, and this is group 6A, we look at neon, 3s2, 3p4, six valence electrons, two in the s and four in the p, two in the first x, one in the py, and one in the pz, giving us a count of 16 protons, 16 neutrons, 16 electrons. And again, would it be easier to fill these two empty spaces in the Lewis dot diagram, or would it be easier to give up those six, while well, sulfur will actually pick up two, taking on 3s2, 3p6, stable, just like argon, and this gives it a negative two charge because now we have 18 electrons, two more electrons than protons, giving us the negative two charge. So let's look at one more example, and we will go to the nitrogen group, group 5A ions, and nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. We see its electron orbitals as one empty space in each of the three p suborbitals, and three empty spaces around its Lewis dot. Seven protons, seven neutrons, seven electrons. So is it easier to give up five electrons or take on three? Well, nitrogen will take on three, becoming just like neon, stable at 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, following the rule of octet, eight. And now we have an electron count of 10, and 10 electrons versus seven protons gives us a negative three charge, and nitrogen typically takes on a negative three charge, as will all of the elements in that group 5a ion. So ions, whether they be cations by losing electrons or anions by gaining electrons, they are charged atoms, and we will use those charged atoms to create ionic bonds because, thankfully, Paula Abdul back in the 80s sang a song called Opposites Attract, and we know that positive ions and negative ions want to hook up and join together in ionic bonds, and that's what we'll continue to look at as we continue working through chemistry. It is all that matters.